silence your cell phones, but, but don't turn them off because we, we want you hashtagging and tweeting and posting on Facebook throughout if, you, if a speaker hits you with something that you, you want to share with the rest of the, the community and, and put it out there in social media, that would be fantastic. We ask that you find your nearest, nearest emergency exit as well. And uh, I think that's all the housekeeping notes. For those of you that have been here before, you know what 10X is all about. You know what we're doing here. But for those of you that don't, we do have a little video to get us in the mood, to get us kicked off, to show you what this whole 10 thing is all about. Please pay attention to the screen. From Kenya to Colombia, from Iraq to Korea, in slums, in schools, in prisons, and in theaters. Every day, people gather at TEDx events around the world to hear the best ideas bubbling up in their communities. Mm -hmm. Today, you are part of a global conversation about our shared future. So what is this TEDx? TEDx is an initiative of the TED Conference, a nonprofit devoted to ideas worth spreading. We grant free licenses to allow TED-like events to spread globally. This event today is based on the TED conference format and ideals, but is independently organized by your local community. So please make sure to thank the team of volunteers who worked so hard on today's event. It's their ideas, dedication, and time that made it all possible. It's they who booked all the speakers, and the views you'll hear today are, of course, those of those speakers, not necessarily of TED. <laughs> Talks as part of an exciting conversation among you. It is a day for curiosity and for skepticism, for openness and for critical thinking, for inspiration and for action. The more you enter into it, the more you'll turn out. And now, on with the show. You want to open up? Now our, now our first two sessions were dominated by speakers uh, mm -hmm. from school district student speakers. This last session is going to be adult speakers, and they're, they're going to uh, hopefully rock our world in a way and challenge us with some new ideas and some different things. Uh, our first speaker is a staff member at Qualcomm, and he is uh, the man behind the Pink a Bit Labs. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to the TEDx stage to Mr. Ed Hidalgo. So for the last 15 years, I've been working in the world of corporate recruitment and staffing. But over the last eight years, I've had a unique opportunity, because of some amazing colleagues, to blend in the world of workforce development, career counseling, and education. And that has led us to a prompt, or a question, or a challenge that goes, how does a child aspire to a career they don't know exists? Especially when we know that most children We'll never have a no. class on career readiness, Abba. college ex exploration, Abba. or anything like it. In fact, they'll spend most of their time worrying about grades. So another question. Why the lack of dedicated time, people, and resources working with young people to really explore what's out there in the world? What if, what if one of the purposes of school and of education was to help each child oh, Discover and explore their own unique strengths, interests, and desires, and how those can align to their next steps in life. Because we know that students are going to spend years studying biology, chemistry, and English. They can provide interesting commentary on a variety of novels and literature. And they gain this awareness day after day, class after class, year after year. But they can't with clarity articulate who they are and their next steps in life. They'll spend an amount of time near zero focusing on themselves and how they fit into the world. Is this not more important than world history? I mean, should we really focus on world history when we don't know how we fit into the world? Now, I'm not suggesting that young people need to select what career they want at an early age, but I do think that during these formative, critical years, that young people should have the opportunity to understand how it is that they are wired and the enormous range of possibilities out in the world. When I was in high school, I had a number of amazing people around me. I went to a great boys school called Boys Latin back in Baltimore, Maryland. That school made a, a big difference in my life. I wasn't um, a particularly good student. I think I was a much better athlete. 
And I love this photo because it reminds me of a, a very powerful TED Talk by Amy Cuddy. She's a social psychologist that studies nonverbal communication. And in this moment, you see me in my power pose, in my pride pose. Like at the best of the best, I can guarantee you that there were no pride poses happening in my math class. I was so bad at math. So bad at math. In this case, I had just intercepted a, a football and ran it back 55 yards for a touchdown. This is when I was at my best. And I had my grades in my back pocket to prove it. I remember sitting at my desk and thinking, why am I here? What am I meant to do? This math stuff is so important to the adults. I am so bad at it. Who would ever want me? I even remember a teacher at one point saying, we shouldn't expect too much more from Ed through the end of the semester. And that was really hard to hear. But the good news is that I made it through high school. I ended up going to college. Three colleges later, and almost five years later, I, I stumbled into a major that didn't meet my talents, that didn't match my talents, and better yet, didn't require math. I even graduated with three job offers. I had successfully made it through high school and college without having a single conversation about my own unique strengths, interests, and values and how those align to the world. At this point, I was employed, but I was still wondering, where do I fit in? As it turns out, my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, the love of my life, was getting her degree in, of all things, career counseling. And she used me as a test pilot for this instrument that career counselors use called the MBTI, or the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. I was 25. I can still remember the moment when she shared with me the results that read, practical service to people. In that moment, I knew that I mattered to the world. In that moment, I knew that I had special gifts and special talents that could be employed beyond my mathematics skills. That, that moment, that moment, and that assessment in particular, changed my entire trajectory around my thoughts around how I matter to the world. And over the next several years, I would take additional assessments, like the strong interest in 